Hey everybody, this is James, and today we're going to take a look at some of the entries from this year's Games Plus Jam. Some of my favourite entries to the jam itself. Uh, just in the background here, now this is my game that I worked on during the, during the game jam, which was a lot of fun to do, and it was fun doing the uh, regular updated devlog videos along the way too. And of course, if you want to play any of the games that are in this video, or any of the other games that were made during the jam, There'll be a link in the description down below to go check them all out. Uh, there's obviously I only have enough time to put so many games in this video or else this video would end up being an hour long. But even if your game isn't in this video, all the games that were made for the jam were fun. There was lots of cool games, lots of interesting things. I'm just going to show some of the highlights and some of my personal favourites in this video. So without going on too much, let's go ahead and dive into the first game. So first up on the list here is Lie of the Beholder, a really interesting idea for a game but more importantly an absolutely gorgeous looking game. Uh, the amount of artwork and cool looking pixel art that was made for this entry is absolutely fantastic. You can see some of it here in action and the idea behind the game is really interesting too. You pick one little character, they're all putting on their little uh, talent stage shows and you pick one to be your favourite and then when you jump into the game you have to protect them from having tomatoes thrown at them and things like that. Uh, and more importantly, the other uh, candidates in the talent show, you have to try and mess them up and make sure that they don't win. And your chosen one wins the whole show. It's a little bit... Uh, it's definitely an interesting idea for a game and it's sometimes a little bit hard to control, but it's completely... Uh, one of my favourite games because of how good the game looks and that the audio is really good as well. There's some awesome bits of dialogue in the game too. Next up on the list is Minimart. A really fun little simple game that is quite addicting to play. The aim of the game is you play as a little shopkeeper owner and you have to keep your stock or your shelves stocked up as customers come and buy stuff from the shelves. There's some interesting little wrinkles like you can only order so much food and for various different items, food and drink. You can only, only order so much on each delivery. So as more customers come into your store, you have to manage them buying more and more things as your orders don't quite keep up. But the game is a lot of fun. As I said, it's really quite addicting. There's something, something just fun about the routine of stocking up the shelves, running over, doing orders, grabbing some deliveries from the truck, trying to keep it all balanced as, the, as more and more customers enter your store. And the art style I really love is so simple, but it works really, really well for this kind of game. And at the end of the day, running around and just having this little bit of fun works really nicely. Next up is one of my favorite looking games in the jam, which is Follow the Blackbird. It's got an absolutely wonderful watercolor style uh, visual aesthetic to the game. And it tells a lovely little story of a little girl and a blackbird trying to do something nice for her mother. As I said, the artwork is absolutely gorgeous and the music that plays in the background works really nicely for the kind of game that it is. And there's a few, although it's primarily done as a storytelling device, there are some interactive elements. You have to click on certain things to progress the story and there's interactive puzzles that you do along the way too. For one week of work, the amount of artwork that was created in the game is absolutely amazing. And I honestly feel that this could work very well as a standalone thing, as a as a app on a tablet and stuff like that. I think it would work very well as something you could play with a small child and enjoy the story together. Definitely one of my favourite entries from the gem. Next up is The Last Guy, a platforming action game full of cool little style and some interesting level design. The idea of this game is you're running around through these areas and you have to avoid getting caught by the alien women who will essentially end the game for you. But it's got some really cool things like the yellow lines around the level that indicate areas that it's safe for you to land on and things like that and are meant to guide you throughout the level. There is a bit of an odd thing where the developer made some yellow bits uh, meant to uh, trick the player into going the wrong way. You never die from doing those bits going the wrong way, but it's not really something you should do in a level design. You kind of break the rules that the yellow thing is safe by doing that. Uh, so it's definitely something I wouldn't recommend doing, but the yellow lines being there in general is a really good idea to guide the player along the way. Also, I really love the simple pixel art art style of the game and the uh, cool guy aesthetic of the player running around to the level. Next up is The Compliment Corner, 
a game where you sit in a little wooden shack on the side of the street and people come up to you and you give them a compliment. <laughs> Definitely a fun idea for the game. And I again, I love this very cartoony kind of art style that you have. So the, the idea is you pick out these little t- words, tags from your folder, pick one out that suits the character that appears, and then if it matches up nicely, they give you a nice big tip. Personally, I think these would be a great idea to just include in the real world. Maybe we should have compliment corner stations lying all around the world. That would be pretty good. But this game works really well. It's a lot of fun. And there's some silly bits of uh, interactions you can have with these characters along the way too. Next up here is Alpha Squirrel. A game where you run around as a little squirrel and you have to rescue the other squirrels in the area from the burning forest that surrounds you. A very simple little platformer but executed really really well I love how the game looks it's got this kind of old school art style as well as the music fits the gameplay really really well there's not really too much punishment in the game also which is really good you could definitely take a glance at the level and think oh look at all this fire it's gonna be really dangerous but the fire will only kill you if you stay in the fire for a relatively long period of time which in a game jam is absolutely a really good idea you don't want to punish your players too much but having the threat of the fire there works really well. And plus the level design in the game is really nice. It flows very well together and running and jumping around feels really nice. Next up is Slow Walker, a game where each level has a different unique mechanic for you to play along with. The idea of each level is kind of puzzling out, oh, how do I get from where the player starts to the door at the end of the level? And the unique ideas that are presented are actually really interesting. On every level, you have a different cursor on your little character. When I was first playing through the first couple of levels, I thought, oh, why? what was the point of putting these cursors in that are unique? That just seems like a whole lot of extra work for not much reward. But then I think on the third or fourth level, suddenly the cursor actually did something to interact with the player. And I was like, oh, turns out that was a really good idea. <laughs> because then you suddenly notice that, oh, this actually does something. But I love the art style of this game. It has this kind of cool vectorized look which works really nicely and there's a lot of cool effects put on the character. You can see there's been a lot of polish put into the game itself. So pretty much everything about this game I enjoyed and liked. There isn't any sound unfortunately in the game which would obviously make the game experience much better having sound included but you can't have everything. It is a game jam after all. The only other issue I had with the game was I got to one level that I couldn't, unfortunately, get past at all. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a very simple answer for how you get past this level, but I got stuck and then I was annoyed because I couldn't play any more levels. There is a handy little level select system, but unfortunately the later levels are all locked uh, when you can't get by one. So that's another little game jam tip is, hey, if you have multiple levels and a level select, just unlock them all. What does it matter? Does it really matter if the player gets plays to a level that you didn't necessarily uh, mean them to get to? It, that's okay. It doesn't really matter. But apart from that, the game itself was absolutely fantastic. I love the idea of having a different uh, mechanic on each level that you have to try and puzzle out to complete that world. Next up is Fastest Gun in the West. One of my absolute favourite entries in the jam and the game voted number one by the community in the voting section of the jam itself this game is absolutely fantastic it's so simple all you're doing is you're standing as a little character on top of a hill and you shoot people and snakes and things that come towards you as you go but everything in the game is executed so well so well literally the, when you think about it the game is there's points on the screen and you're clicking on those points that's all that's happening in this game you have to reload after six shots but apart from that there's really not much else going on but the game has been polished so well the art style looks fantastic the aesthetic of everything works really well with what's going on here and things like the sound effect really help sell the impact of each bullet that you fire in the game it stands as a prime example of polishing up your games really helps them sell and stand out from the crowd because as i said this is technically just a very simple thing it could be circles on the screen moving towards the player that you have to click on that uh, still represent the same core gameplay loop but it is all the elements that tie together to make it into probably my favorite game from the jam next up is employee non grata a game 
where you are playing as a boss in a dungeon and trying to survive a hero coming to attack you. The idea behind the game is really fun. The gameplay itself is pretty simple. Well, actually, I say it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Actually doing it is quite hard, and I'm never really the best at these style of games. But there's a very cool story element to it. You start off the game getting a little intro sequence where the player is uh, getting a job in the dungeon. The player is totally unqualified, but they've lied on their CV to get the uh, job that they want, and suddenly the big bad uh, dungeon boss person thinks they're amazing, and they become... They're supposed to be the most powerful boss in this dungeon. So when the hero turns up that you have to attack, when you beat them the first time, you then get to give them some extra powers. So when they come back the next day, they are a little bit stronger and a little bit harder to beat. The game is a lot of fun. I really love the storytelling. The graphics are super simple, but work really well with this kind of game. Next up is Minivac. A very, very fun idea for a game which is based on an Isaac Asimov story, which obviously, you know, Isaac Asimov being a, a somewhat legendary science fiction writer. The idea behind the game is you're trying to answer some a question about the nature of entropy in the universe. But more importantly, the gameplay of the game is running through various different levels as fast as you can to try and beat a, another robot that's trying to run ahead of you. The gameplay of the game works really well. It's simple and straightforward but feels really good. I really love the NES kind of art style, which holds together very, very well. It isn't just low res uh, pixel art. The whole aesthetic of it fits together very nicely and actually works really, really well together. The story weaves in very well as you see the levels progress through time. And at the end of each level, you get a little cutscene, you get a little cutscene to enjoy along the way. And playing through the game is a lot of fun. The only minor gripe I have about the game is the final boss fight at the end it is very 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 hard uh, it's a little bit uh, it kind of comes out of nowhere in comparison with everything else in the game but of course these things always happen in game jam sometimes it's very hard to test it and find the balance when you're developing the game yourself so one thing you learn eventually through doing game jams is try and make it as easy as you can it's something I always struggle with too it's not something that I apply every single time in my own games because sometimes you forget about it. <laughs> but that's okay, that's part of learning and getting more experienced with the game development lifestyle. And the final game that I'm going to showcase here is Floriana Jones and the Temple of Bestie. This is a very, very simple game, very simple gameplay element, but what I really like about it is actually how it subverts your expectations of what's going on. You start off the game as this little character arriving in this temple, trying to find meaning in their life. They get to the center of this little island thing, grab a heart, and suddenly these creatures start coming. So your first instinct is, as a player of a game, I have to stop these. The only controls I have is to stick my little sword out so I can attack these various different creatures coming towards me. So my thought at this point was, oh, this is pretty simple and straightforward. This game is just okay. I'll move on, I'll move on from this in a second. But then I got hit by one. And a little message popped up and I got hit by another one. Oh, it didn't hurt. And as you get hit by more and more, a little revelation starts to occur, which is that these aren't just creatures attacking you. They're a representation of compliments being sent towards you. And the idea of the game is you have to be open to accepting these compliments instead of attacking them and trusting them away in your life. I thought this was a great little game with a great little message and the way it subverts how you would expect to play a game like this was absolutely fantastic. And those little gameplay moments where a game can do that to you and have that effect on you, I personally think are some of the best things that games can do in general. So this game, despite being so simple in nature, I personally thought was absolutely fantastic. And there you go. That's it for the games that I wanted to highlight from this year's Games Plus Jam. We'll have another Games Plus Jam next year, but I obviously want to say thank you to everyone who participated and submitted a game. And even if you participated and didn't quite get your game done in time, I saw a few people talking about that. That's okay. The fact that you even tried is amazing. I saw some cool things from people that unfortunately didn't get their game submitted, but they still were able to share with the community and show some of the awesome things that they were making along the way. My favorite thing about this is that now that the game jam is complete, there's 71 more games in the world that wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for this amazing community doing cool things. So congratulations again to everyone who took part in the jam. I look forward to seeing all the amazing things you awesome people create throughout the year going forward. 
Thanks for watching this video. I'll be back soon with more tutorials and more game dev goodness very soon.